Hey everybody, welcome back to the EKG lectures here with Reed. And um, so today we're going to be going over atrial flutter. This is an exciting lecture. Uh, atrial flutter is a fascinating arrhythmia, and so I'm excited to jump into this and understand the mechanics behind what we're seeing on the EKG. So let's go ahead and get started. So atrial flutter is, as its name implies, is an atrial arrhythmia. It is characterized by an atrial rate that is organized, so it's very regular, and it's occurring typically somewhere between 230 and 350 beats per minute. On average, we would say around 300 beats per minute is our atrial rate. That's our flutter rate. And so another way that you could think of this is it is caused by atrial reentry pathways. And the most common atrial reentry pathway is here in the tricuspid uh, annulus. And so we look at this coronal slice here, and we know that we've got a tricuspid valve that is on um, the, at the junction of the right atria and right ventricle. And so we would say that here is our tricuspid valve. This is like a 3D depiction of our tricuspid valve. And interestingly, what can happen in our tricuspid valve, and actually let me let me just redraw this to be more, this is, um, this is an arrhythmia of the atria, so our tricuspid valve is say right here. So what actually ends up happening is you get this re-entry circuit in our atria, specifically around the tricuspid annulus. And what happens is around the tricuspid annulus, which annulus like annular, like circular, you get this re-entry pathway that circulates around that tricuspid annulus. And every time it comes around, it sends a wave of depolarization through the atria, and then it re-enters this pathway. And so we get this re-entry circuit within the atria. And so it creates this sawtooth pattern that we commonly associate with atrial flutter. And each of these sawtooth patterns are representing, that is a flutter wave. So that is a flutter wave. And we said that the rate of these flutter waves from flutter wave to flutter wave is roughly 300 beats per minute. And those flutter waves are representing the wave of depolarization that is occurring every time that it re-enters this circuit in the atria. And so when we look at atrial flutter, the ventricular response, which is our QRS, depends on the AV node because the AV node, which is sitting in the atria, right, like right around here, our AV node is what we would call a bystander. And why is it a bystander? Because this is a, an arrhythmia that is arising from atrial tissue, and our AV node is going to capture that signal and send it down to the ventricles. And so what's interesting is the AV node is not directly participating, but it is determining the ventricular response. So the AV node is what determines the ventricular response. So what that means is, is the AV node conducting every three flutter waves, every four flutter waves, every two flutter waves. The health of the AV node could be, you know, influenced by ischemic heart disease. It could be influenced by um, sympathetic tone if you're stressed out or in a high kind of fight or flight state. Um, if you're taking any medications that could slow the AV node down, like maybe diltiazem or metoprolol. And so the AV node is gonna conduct at a certain rate, and we'll look and, and give you a good example of what that's gonna look like. When the AV node does conduct that rate, typically 
it takes the signal and it sends it down into the ventricles in a typical fashion. So the QRS is going to depolarize. The QRS should really be the same as the baseline, right? Ideally, the QRS is not directly influenced by our atrial flutter rhythm here. And so let's take a look at some examples of some EKGs. This is a really clean example. And so what you'll notice is we've got these narrow QRSs that are occurring. And what you can see is when I look at the atrial activity, I've got this sawtooth pattern. And notice whenever it passes through the QRS, it kind of morphs into that QRS. And so we've got that sawtooth pattern. The rate of these sawtooth flutter waves, if I find a flutter wave that lands, if you look at this flutter wave right here, each flutter wave is occurring at a roughly 300 beats per minute in this case. That's between the two flutter waves. And so this ventricular response now, we see the atria is fluttering and we see that sawtooth pattern. And notice that for every one flutter, two flutters, three flutters, we get a QRS. And then we have one flutter, two flutter, three flutters, QRS. One, two, three in our QRS. So this is what we would call three to one atrial flutter. Because for every three flutter waves, we are getting one QRS. And notice in this case, our QRS are narrow because the AV node is conducting it through the his Purkinje system into our ventricular um, phase of depolarization. And so this is a good example of three to one atrial flutter. Right, so we have one flutter wave that conducts to the ventricles, and then the next two, the AV node is still repolarizing and is unable to propagate that signal until the third one again, and then we get the process to repeat. So that's three to one atrial flutter. Let's take a look at a four to one atrial flutter here. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but you'll get the gist here. We've got, say, up here in lead two, we've got this sawtooth atrial pattern, right? We've got these narrow complex QRSs. And what I notice is that whenever I look at my, down here, we'll say my flutter rate, and we see that the flutters are occurring at, yeah, it looks like around 300 beats per minute, maybe a little bit different, but that's okay. And if I look, I've got one flutter, two flutters, three flutters, and then this last fourth flutter, and then we've got our QRS, kind of within those four flutter complexes. Then I've got one, two, three, four, with my QRS in there. So this is a good example of four to one atrial flutter. Wherever you count your flutter waves, wherever you start your flutter wave count is kind of where you need to end it for each QRS, right? So if I want to start it with, say, the flutter wave that starts before a QRS, like say this flutter wave, if that was number one, and I've got two, three, four, and that's my complex of four flutters per one QRS. Then we start over, one, two, three, four, with my one QRS. So there's a, there's a bunch of ways to calculate your flutter rate. And so just always be aware of um, the flutter waves that are gonna be buried in the QRS complexes. So this is a good example of four to one atrial flutter. And notice that whenever the flutter ratio to QRS changes, our rate gets slower, right? So this is a slower um, rhythm here. So it's four to one atrial flutter. You can also have variable conduction, right? The AV node doesn't have to conduct the same way every single time. And so in this rhythm, if you look down here at our lead two rhythm strip, we've got our flutter waves. We've got one flutter, two flutter, three flutters. On the fourth flutter, we get a QRS. So this occurs at a four to one. And then we have one flutter, two flutters. So this is a two to one before we get our QRS. 
Then the next one is one, two, three, four. So then we get four to one, and then we get two to one, and then four to one. And so this one is variable conduction. We're alternating between four to one conduction and two to one conduction in between each QRS. And so this would be a good example of atrial flutter with variable conduction. And so that's just a good example of kind of the physiology behind why can we see an irregular rhythm, right? This is a very irregular rhythm. We've got short and then long, right? Short, long, short, short, long, short, longer again. And so you have to really make sure that you're not getting this confused with atrial fibrillation in that you can still have irregularities because the AV node conducts well one time and then maybe it's taking a little bit longer in the next beat. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this variation in AV nodal conduction, right? This could be occurring because of inspiration and expiration that is changing autonomic, uh, you know, increasing or decreasing that sympathetic or parasympathetic tone with our inspiration and expiration that we see in sinus arrhythmia. Or this can just be somebody has an unhealthy AV node where it conducts well and then the next time it's a little stunned and then it has time to recover. So that's our variable conduction. And then the last strip I want to show you is an atrial flutter with two to one conduction. And you might say, well, you know, this is a, a difficult one, two to one conduction. And if you look down at the inferior lead here, you can see we've got a narrow complex QRS that is occurring quite quick. And if you look at the atrial activity, I can't see really great like sinus P waves, but what I do see is I see maybe this baseline sawtooth pattern that is occurring through our baseline. And so this is occurring with two sawtooths per one QRS. And so this is two to one atrial flutter where the AV node's passing every two flutter wave signals and getting one QRS. What I want you to look for, if you're having trouble with this rhythm here, Right, we see that the, the rate of this is maybe 140 beats per minute, and so that makes sense, right? If our atrial rate is around 300, our ventricular rate in two to one flutter should be about half of that. And if you're having a hard time determining flutter wave morphology, always go to V1. V1 captures good, sharp, positive P waves in these typical types of atrial flutter. And so what you can notice is you've got sharp P wave, and then look at this T wave, you see another sharp P wave on top of it. Sharp, 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 sharp. And so you've got these sharp P's that is evidence of our atrial flutters in V1. And so that can really help you as you're looking for flutter waves that are buried inside of a T wave or in the ST segment. So V1 is a great place to look. And in this case, you see we have flutter wave, flutter wave, and then QRS, flutter wave, flutter wave, QRS, flutter wave, flutter wave, QRS. And so this is why this is two to one conduction in our atrial flutter. So I'm gonna be posting some more videos on atrial flutter talking about how do we know what direction the reentry pathway is in? But I hope this helps you understand the physiology behind atrial flutter and um, why our baseline kind of sawtooth pattern is occurring. And we really see that the most because of the reentry circuit that we get with atrial flutter. Remember that in atrial flutter, our QRS morphology is going to be the same as baseline. So if somebody has a baseline, left bundle branch block. When the AV node conducts the signal down into the ventricles, we're gonna see it conducted in a left bundle branch morphology. All right, so remember, it's, the QRS is gonna look the same as it does at baseline. And so looking at prior EKGs of this individual can help you, you know, work through that clinically.
So I hope this helps and have a great day.